In this lesson, we're going to take a look at how Drupal 8 can help us quickly expose a REST API. We'll do this by enabling and configuring the REST module and the REST UI module from Contrib. We'll also take a look at a high-level overview of how an API is created and served by Core in Drupal 8. And by the end of the video, you'll understand how the components in these four modules contribute to providing an out-of-the-box API without writing a single line of code. We'll again be making heavy use of the Postman Chrome extension, so if you don't already have that installed, you might want to do so. Let's get started. The first thing we want to do in addition to downloading Drupal 8 Core is to download the REST UI module. The REST UI module will allow us to configure our API endpoints without having to dig in YAML files to do so. Here we're looking at a fresh installation of Drupal 8 along with the REST UI module. Let's log in and get started. Now that we're logged in, first things first, we need to enable a few modules. We'll go to the Extend page. We can find the REST modules down at the bottom of the page. We're going to want to enable HAL, HTTP Basic Authentication, REST UI, RESTful Web Services, and Serialization. While we're waiting for those modules to install, let's take a look at how these moving pieces fit together. This graphic is from a presentation done by Lynn Clark from DrupalCon Prague in 2013. It describes the basic pipeline for REST responses in Drupal 8. If we trace an incoming request, we can see that it's routed to the request handler. The request handler identifies that the REST module is responsible for this request and sends it to the deserializer to normalize the data. The request handler then matches up the request with the appropriate resource handler. We'll take a look at an example of those from Core in a little while. This resource plugin takes the data from the incoming request and retrieves the relevant information from the database or elsewhere. When the resource plugin returns data to the request handler, it again interacts with the serializer before being sent along as a response. The modules included in Core that we just enabled will handle serialization for XML, JSON, and HAL plus JSON. It's probably not surprising that the serialization module is responsible for deserializing and serializing request and response data. The HAL module specifically provides a HAL plus JSON serialization plugin. The HTTP basic authentication module provides an authentication plugin, which allows us to control access to our API resources based on HTTP method. There will likely be other authentication mechanisms such as OAuth, supported in the future via contrib modules. The RESTful Web Services module handles the resource plugin system as well as defining the initial resource routes. A good example of a resource plugin can be found in the DB Log module, which provides an API endpoint for watchdog entries. REST UI, which we took a look at, is a super helpful contrib module which exposes our RESTful Web Services configuration via the admin UI, so we can configure our API endpoints without editing YAML files. Now that we have all of our modules enabled, let's take a look at that configuration screen. We'll go to Configuration. Scrolling down under Services, we'll see a REST item. Here is the list of resources provided to us by the RESTful Web Services module. For now, let's just look at the content resource. When I click Edit, I'm taken to a configuration page where I can select which HTTP verbs this API should respond to, as well as which formats and which authentication methods we should work with for each verb. Once we're happy with how we've configured our API, let's jump over to the permissions page to get permissions set up as well. Scrolling down, we can see that several new permissions have been added by the REST Web Services module. For each type of resource we've enabled, we're able to specify which Drupal roles can access a particular HTTP verb. This means we can open our API to get requests from anonymous users, and at the same time, we can restrict post, patch, and delete operations to administrators. Now that we've got our permissions in order, let's try making a few requests to our new API. Of course, before we can make requests to our new API, we need to create some content. Let's just create a simple page node. We could also use Devel Generate to generate sample content for our site. After saving our page node, or generating some sample content, we can switch over to Postman to make a request against our new API. The URL we need to hit to access our content endpoint is node slash one and then add a query parameter for the format we're interested in retrieving. In this case, let's grab HALJSON. If we submit that GET request, our API will respond back with a HALJSON representation of that node. It's worth emphasizing here that we've included the request format as a query parameter. If we'd rather retrieve XML or just straight JSON, we can simply tweak this query parameter to receive the desired format. Let's see what node 1 looks like as an XML representation. 
We can also set up our authorization header here to pass our Drupal credentials along to our API request. This will allow us to make authenticated requests to do things like post nodes. Let's give that a shot. In order to post a new content resource, we need to change this endpoint to be entity slash node. We also need to set our basic authentication header using our Drupal username and password. Then we'll set the content type header so Drupal knows to accept HAL plus JSON. We'll switch our HTTP verb to post. And then we're going to paste in some raw post data. This is a little bit obtuse, but what we're doing is specifying a link type here so Drupal knows exactly which entity type, a node, and which bundle, an article, that we're trying to create. After that, we provide values for the title field and the body field, and we're ready to post our data. Let's go ahead and send this request. To post a node to our Drupal 8 site, we're going to need to use a new API endpoint. And I apologize for this, but a new version of the Postman extension as well. The endpoint we're going to hit is new blog.local slash entity slash node. We're going to need to add basic authentication here since only authenticated users are able to make post requests. So we'll enter in our username and password and click update request. Taking a look at the headers that Postman is going to add to our request, we can see two. First, there's the content type where we're specifying the type of data we're going to be posting to Drupal. In this case, HAL plus JSON. There's also an authorization header that's been added. This was created automatically for us when we entered in our authorization information on the previous tab. Then in the body field, we're going to paste in the raw JSON we wish to post to Drupal. This is a little bit obtuse. HAL plus JSON is a little bit hard to type out. But what we're doing here is we're specifying a link type so Drupal knows which entity type, a node, and which bundle, an article, to create with our data. After that, we provide values for the title and body, and we're ready to post. We'll go ahead and click Send. And if everything goes as expected, we should see a 201 created response here. If we look at the headers in the response, the location we get gives us the URL for our new node, in this case, node slash 53. Back on our site, if we load node 53, we can indeed see the test post that we just created with Postman. So far, we've seen it's easy to get and post data from our Drupal 8 site. But if we enable the views module, we can build an even more powerful API. Let's build a new view. We'll click on Structure and Views. When we add a new view, we're now given a new option for a display type called REST Export Settings. Let's create a new view called Articles, and we're going to show content of type article, sorted by newest first, and provide a REST export path of API slash articles. I'll click Save and Edit. Since this is just a view with an extra display type, it works like all of the other views you're familiar with, including support for contextual filters. Let's build a quick view. Instead of showing the full entity, let's just show fields. We're going to have the title. Let's also add a summary field. We're going to use the summary or trimmed formatter and limit it to 600 characters and click apply. We can see in the preview below that we've just created a JSON response API using views that will just list out the title and a teaser for all of our article nodes without writing a single line of code. We'll go ahead and save this view and then take a look at our API slash articles endpoint in Postman. Back in Postman, we're going to make a get request to our new API slash articles endpoint. Here we can see an array being returned with the title and body for each one of our article nodes. We just built a new API to export articles using views and just clicking it together without writing any code at all. Pretty cool, huh? To recap, in this lesson, we took a look at how the modules included in Drupal 8 core, along with the REST UI helper module, allow us to build a simple API to expose content on our site without writing a single line of code. We also took a look at the REST pipeline in Drupal 8 and saw various points Drupal modules can provide additional plugins to make our API even more flexible. I can imagine contrib modules will likely be written to provide additional data export formats, as well as supporting additional resource types. Drupal 8 truly makes it easy to start building an API for your site. So what are you waiting for?